Spring is returning to the hills, bringing with it vigorous growth, richly saturated treetops, green grass, radiant flowers, and a rush of excitement as the vibrant rebirth flourishes throughout the forests. It feels so incredible to be immersed in it all, embracing even the pesky bugs and little scrapes from rolling in the fields. The earth is fertile and alive again. I've dedicated these past few weeks to preparing to move into the cabin, getting into the swing of living with the land and restoring my garden. And there's still a lot left to do on the exterior and property, but I feel capable and eager. Last year, I ordered a massive amount of compost from a local farm for the garden, and the batch had a dense, hard to work with, clay-like consistency that I believe partially factored into stunting vegetable growth. So my initial goal was to amend the soil, loosen it, and add some different compost. I figured I could reuse the old soil I shoveled out to build up the garden floor and try my luck with expanding into the earth as opposed to solely pots and beds. It gave me a chance to clean up the space and become more optimistic about the growing season this year as the goal is to cultivate as much as possible for our meals. Meanwhile, the birches were closing in on leafing out, so there was a small window for me to do some tapping. There's a specific tree I use right along the river. I like the idea that it soaks up that fresh running water directly and infuses it with minerals to create a sweet, woody, and hydrating drink. There's really nothing that quenches your thirst quite like it in the spring. After mixing for a while, the beds looked so nourishing and felt richer in the right ways and ready to go so I could reinstall the irrigation system and prep for the plantings. And then it came time to make some final repairs and put the first round of plants in the soil.
and in perfect timing, the rain came to hydrate the beds and soak the roots, and I paused and felt so grateful in that moment. It was like a sign, especially after last year's drought, saying that this time around would be fruitful. And following the planting, while I was warming up, Kyle made some serious strides on the interior too. We've got a stove! Yes. And it's blue flame, it looks perfect with a little <laughs> bit of white tip, or yellow, here and there. It's exactly what you want. I'm so excited to eat these fiddleheads. It's been a whole year since I've had them, and we got a decent amount this year. Fiddleheads are really good for you too. They're rich in uh, vitamin K, iron, folate, and it's really important that you cook and prepare them properly too. They can cause some serious digestive upset. So you take off all of the brown husk and then rinse them really well. I'm going to put them in the boiling water. You want to do this for maybe 10 minutes and then saute them for five. Um, I'm gonna chop up a couple of fresh ingredients to saute with them and have them with dinner tonight. Would you try first the salmon? Mm -hmm.
there are so many sticks and twigs and branches and full-size trees all over the cabin property right now. Literally, I don't know how we're going to get to them all, but I want to make a big dent on it today and try to burn them up. The storms were just ruthless this year, but anything I can get done now, we won't have to worry about when we're here daily, so that'll be such a big weight off of our shoulders. Oh, and the ramps are in season right now on the hillside, so I want to get up there tonight so I can start pickling and sauteing and making pesto out of them too. That'd be really good. Let's see what else we can get here. Ramps have the strongest, most pungent smell. The whole kitchen smells like garlic right now. I'm going to start making pesto, and in the past, I did put the bulb in with it, and that can just get really bitter and overwhelming really quickly. So instead, what I'm going to do is remove the roots and then remove the leaves and use just the leaves for pesto. And with this part, I'm going to pickle them and they're so good like that. I've never made them myself like that, but I've had them at local farmer's markets and they are something. So also I'm going to save a couple full ones for sauteing. Once everything's separated, I just have to blanch it and it'll be good to go.
Today, Kyle and I are still working on the inside of the cabin. Underneath the countertops where all the raw wood is, I'm going to paint that white. Uh, he's been working on the stove and the faucet today, hooking that all up and installing it. It's really exciting to see the first flame come out of the stove, so it'll be really cool to see the water coming out of the faucet. What do you have left to do? Well, the stove had a leak. Yeah. And I just pinpointed it. It's on the yellow flexible line. So I just have to replace that and then it should be good and not smell like propane again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm putting in the, I'm going to silicone the sink drain in right now. And then I cut out the countertop where the faucet's going to go down. And now I'm going to mess with all these fittings, try and get the system put together so I can visualize it. Yeah. This porch has been functioning as a workspace the entire time that we have been doing construction and renovating inside, so today's the day that it finally gets cleared out, separating what's going to be saved for future projects and what can be discarded and burned. Definitely have lots of cleaning to do. The place is covered in sawdust, but it is going to be so nice to see this space cleared out and the outside deck right there too it's just been piled up forever And that takes us right up to the current state of the cabin. The inside is clean and ready to be fully furnished and stocked with food and clothes and some carefully selected personal belongings since the space is limited. It's been a blast and a thorough learning experience building out the interior. Next up, we'll be finishing the exterior and a jam-packed list of projects outside, which I'm really looking forward to. Two and a half years of some of the hardest work I've ever done in my life. And today, it's move-in day. 